A machine so colossal that it redefines our very notion of warfare. A weapon built from 1,350 tons of steel, stretching nearly 50 meters in length, with a barrel over 30 meters long and a firing range of 47 kilometers. This is Heavy Gustav, a true behemoth of war commissioned by Adolf Hitler himself. Not a figment of fantasy, but a real monstrous railway gun that took thousands of workers and over a thousand soldiers to assemble and operate. Today, we're diving deep into the archives to unravel the story behind this engineering Marvel turned strategic misfire. Picture this. In the desperate years leading up to World War II, Hitler was fixated on breaching the seemingly impenetrable defenses along the French-German border. The mighty Maginot Line had long stood as a symbol of French resolve. But Hitler craved a breakthrough, a weapon of unimaginable power that could shatter concrete fortresses and crush entire battalions with a single shot. Enter Heavy Gustav, a project shrouded in secrecy and built at the hands of Krupp Steel Works, the premier weapons forge of the German Reich. Internal documents referred to it simply as the Gustav device, a codename that belied the scale of what was being constructed. The sheer logistics are staggering. Over 4,000 workers labored to assemble this gigantic cannon, while 1,200 soldiers were tasked with its operation. It wasn't just built, it was meticulously engineered to be a symbol of terror. Imagine a cannon mounted on a specially designed railway carriage, rolling on 40 axles and 80 wheels capable of traversing rugged terrain. Its 32-meter-long barrel was a feat of industrial prowess, designed to hurl a projectile across 47 kilometers, and the ammunition. Each gel weighed nearly seven tons, a true tank buster capable of demolishing six meters of reinforced concrete in a single strike. I remember the first time I read about Heavy Gustav. It felt like stepping into a world where ambition had no limits. A giant of steel, a dream turned monstrous reality. Hitler's vision was audacious, a superweapon that would not only break enemy lines but also instill fear across the globe. The cannon was expected to be ready by 1940, a deadline that loomed over the project like a ticking bomb. Every detail was classified, every blueprint a closely guarded secret. The stakes couldn't have been higher. Yet, as history would have it, reality rarely conforms to even the grandest visions. By the time Heavy Gustav was finally completed and deployed in battle, strategic circumstances had shifted dramatically. In 1942, during a desperate push on the Eastern Front, the cannon was brought into action against one of the Soviet Union's most formidable fortresses, an impregnable bastion defended by 100,000 soldiers entrenched behind five meters of concrete and buried bunkers. The idea was simple yet bold. Use the immense firepower of Heavy Gustav to obliterate the enemy's stronghold and paved the way for a breakthrough. But here's where the story takes a twist. In a series of test firings, Heavy Gustav roared to life, launching its 48 massive shells, accumulating a staggering 360 tons of ammunition. Each shot was meant to create a crater, to leave a mark of destruction. Yet, in practice, the results were far from the precision one would expect from a weapon of such caliber. Many shells missed their targets by hundreds of meters. Some even fell harmlessly on the battlefield, leaving behind little more than a deep crater. The only confirmed hit was an underground ammunition depot. A lucky strike, perhaps more by chance than by design. The cannon's inaccuracy, coupled with its cumbersome setup, quickly turned what was meant to be a decisive tactical tool into a costly embarrassment. Its barrel wore out almost immediately after a handful of shots, and the entire operation demanded constant maintenance and recalibration, a luxury that the fast-moving realities of war rarely afforded. Despite the propaganda blitz that toted Heavy Gustav as the pinnacle of German engineering, its actual performance in combat was, at best, disappointing. Meanwhile, Behind the scenes, heavy investments of resources, time, and manpower have been funneled into a project that ultimately failed to deliver the promised breakthrough. When the Nazis finally realized that the superweapon was more of a propaganda tool than a practical weapon, the decision was made to dismantle it. After the war, Hitler himself ordered the destruction of Heavy Gustav, ensuring that this colossal chapter of military ambition would vanish, taking with it the dreams of an unstoppable war machine. Reflecting on Heavy Gustav's story, it's impossible not to see it as a cautionary tale about unchecked ambition and the perils of relying on sheer scale over precision. It's like building a rocket that barely leaves the ground, a spectacular display of engineering, yet fundamentally flawed in its execution. Every shot fired, every miscalculation, reminds us that in the world of warfare, power without accuracy is a wasted effort. This saga also serves as a stark reminder of our vulnerability in the face of technological overreach. Just as outdated software can leave systems exposed to cyber attacks, so too can grandiose weapon systems fall short if they are not backed by sound strategy and reliable technology. Heavy Gustav, 
with all its industrial might and monstrous proportions, ultimately became a symbol of wasted potential, a reminder that the most powerful weapon is not necessarily the one that is biggest, but the one that is smartly designed and effectively employed. Thank you for joining me on this deep exploration of Heavy Gustav, a weapon that, for a brief moment in history, stood as the embodiment of relentless ambition and technological prowess. If this dive into one of history's most audacious military projects has sparked your curiosity, please like, share, and subscribe for more in-depth documentaries. Until next time, stay curious, stay informed, and always remember, sometimes the greatest lessons come not from our successes, but from our spectacular failures.